Hey everyone, this is Dr. Casey Johnson. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I know you're going to love today's episode with Chris Moore. Chris is doing some amazing work, so I'm excited to have him on to share his story with you guys. If you've been loving the Unlock Wellness Podcast, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. The Unlock Wellness Podcast is now on Patreon.com. Patreon is an amazing site that allows you to support your favorite podcasts. So whether it's a dollar per month or 10 or 20, it's an amazing way to help support the Unlock Wellness Podcast. If you're unable to support at this time, I still love you. The podcast will always be free. But the podcast has been growing a lot and using Patreon will help me slowly improve recording equipment so I can get you guys the best sound quality possible as well as help decrease the need to use sponsored ads in the episodes. I'm definitely not against sponsorships by any means, but I do respect your time as listeners, and I don't want to have to overload the podcast with a bunch of ads. So if you do want to support using Patreon, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Johnson. There are even fun incentives for supporting, like shirts and stickers, so be sure to check it out. Also, be sure to follow me on social media to keep up with the latest podcast episodes. The best way to connect with me is on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My username across the board is at Dr. Casey Johnson. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. You can also check out my website at drkcjohnson.com. It has all of the past podcast episodes and more information about each guest under the Listen tab. While you're on my site, also be sure to check out the shop tab where you can check out my first book of my Healthy Children's Book series and learn about the Unlock Wellness Project, which applies a wellness bag to a child in need for each book purchased. Thank you again for listening. I hope this episode leaves you feeling inspired to start making positive changes to your health. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Chris Moore. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Chris Moore. Chris is a vegan fitness enthusiast and he's doing so much positive work. So I'm extremely excited to have him on just to share a story with you guys. So Chris, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm extremely excited to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here and get to talk with you about some stuff. Yeah. So, you know, first off, well, you know, we'll jump into your backstory, you know, where you're from and really what, like what your health and wellness looked like at a younger age and just how it's progressed over time. Yeah. Um, so I am originally from Louisiana and currently based in Northern California. Um, and growing up and even until now, my fitness level has just kind of varied. I mean, starting really young for, I would say probably about 10 years up until around high school, I played a lot of soccer. Um, and I was always really thin and in relatively good shape. I played on a traveling team. Um, but once I got to high school, I stopped playing soccer and I gained a lot of weight, actually. And by the time I graduated from high school, I was at the heaviest. I was around 235, 240 pounds. Wow. Give or take. Yeah. Um, and I had been in that general vicinity, like throughout high school, and it just peaked right around graduation. And, um, so fast forward, maybe like a year or two, and I decided that I was going to get fit, you know, through exercise and eating right. Um, and, and that's really all it had boiled down to when I was in, I am a nurse. So when I was in nursing school, it was a, a really a fast food diet. Um, and so it was just correcting those things. I was still eating meat at that point and, you know, hadn't even, the thought of being a vegan had not even like crossed my mind. Um, so after that, I got actually into fitness a couple, you know, I had always dabbled in it. Like since high school, I lifted weights like on and off, but never like very seriously, um, never routinely or consistently. And then I finally decided that I was going to get consistent um, about four years ago, I would say. What do you think the main motivation for it all was? Like, or do, like, just thinking back, do you know what it is? Just 
I mean, did you just reach a weight that you're like, oh man, this is not where I want to be? Or was there other goals just? I felt really crappy. Yeah. That's like the best way to, I mean, I was having a ton of like indigestion problems, a ton of sleep issues, um, you know, just the general GI problems that like most of the general population has, you know, like just always having heartburn, feeling bloated, feeling tired, fatigued. And I was just like, I'm, t- I was like 19 years old. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's like, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It yeah, is. Like, yeah. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be a teenager and have like chronic, you know, illnesses. And that's what those are, are chronic illnesses. So I just felt like I hadn't, I, I was a nurse. So I learned about all, I had just learned about all these new things like that. I had never really even thought about as a teenager and I graduated nursing school at 20 so it was like all this was just so fresh and I think that was really a big motivator was like how can I take care of people and I don't take care of myself right right and and then obviously that that job requires so much energy um (laughs) you know taking care of people is is no joke I mean it really takes everything that you have and then plus your hours are insane so I'm sure that didn't help at all either. Yeah, I was actually, my first nursing job was in New Orleans and I trained under a guy who liked to work like crazy hours. So when, uh, when I first started working, I was really motivated and you're right. I did, I did work a ton of hours. I mean, nursing, you're already working crazy hours, but I was working nights and you know that you're, if you're not taking care of yourself and you're trying to do that, eventually you're going to burn out. And that's actually where my story goes is that's what happened to me is, you know, I was still eating healthier than I had in the past, but a lot of my habits would come out. I was just doing more of like a, if it fits your macros, which I'm sure you, um, have you heard of that before? Yeah. 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 So it's like, you know, I was, I was keeping my calories down, but I wasn't really taking care of myself and I wound up getting injured, um, from, you know, overtraining and undernutrition, not really making sure that I'm getting the right vitamins and nutrients. And, uh, and so that's, I stopped working out completely, uh, about three years ago. I just completely let it go for two years up until recently here. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where we are now. Yeah. And I did it also motivate you too, Chris, just, um, seeing some of these patients, like where they were, like, you, like you saw your, like, that's where you were going to end up if you didn't make changes as well. Cause you're seeing a lot of yeah. crazy cases and people that are super unhealthy. You know, it, it, it was and is a motivating factor for me all the time. I, my career first, I started off working in the hospital and then um, eventually transitioned to doing home health. And in home health, one of the biggest differences is that you're managing chronic illnesses Um, and so basically all day long, I just get to see the results of poor diet and not taking care of yourself. Like that's, that's what my job is to go out and, and fix these issues of not taking care of your, your health. And, um, and almost every single thing is related to your diet. So yeah, that's like a huge motivating factor. It's like, this is what I have to look forward to. Or not, yeah. you know, it, it's just up to me of what I'm going to put into my body. Right. So once you decided that you were going to flip the script around for yourself, what were, I mean, what were your first steps? I mean, did you just start working out again and then started just to randomly dive into nutrition or like, how did that all evolve for you? Cause obviously, like you said, veganism wasn't even on the radar, which it's not for most people. Right. Well, I mean, when I first, I look at it like two totally different like periods or transitions because I started for me, like I, I feel like I started back over from, from scratch this last time I had developed a lot of poor habits. Again, I drank often and, um, I did smoke cigarettes several, several years ago. So like, I wasn't in the hell. I just overall just wasn't a healthy individual even when I thought like I was taking care of myself better than I was in the past you know and so I think that like to to say flipping the script or what did I do first like I had already had a knowledge of the fitness side of things I just didn't really have any clue about nutrition 
So like when I decided to go vegan, that was the motivating factor for me. It was like, man, I really want to be in healthy and feel good all the time. Like whether or not I work out or if I do, you know, I want to still feel good and I want to learn what it takes to do that. So that was actually where I started was I started learning what was actually good for me and not good for me. And then once I started seeing like how easy it was to eat healthy and enjoy myself. And I started feeling like this newfound energy and wellness. Then it was like, Oh, I've got to do something with this, you know, like productive. And then that's where I actually started with running. That was the first thing that I got back into was I had made up my mind. I wanted to run a half marathon. Um, and so that was the goal I set out for myself. That's cool. Like whenever you did decide that going vegan was going to be the best route for you though was was it like a documentary that you saw or you read something online you know what even made you think that that could be the best option there's like a couple a couple of influencing factors that happen um i i'm a really really big reggae fan and there's an artist named chronics and you may or may not have heard of him but check him out if you have and he's rasta and rasta's are typically uh, vegan. Um, most most Rastas are vegan, and they call it ital cooking, which means that you don't use any animal products at all. And um, so he actually did a cooking show, and he and he said something about you know why can't we just leave the animals in the air, you know the birds in the air, the animals in the land, and the fish in the sea, and and enjoy our food without all that you know that death involved. And at the time I heard it and I still ate meat and I was just, but it like planted a little seed. And, um, I was going through a lot of issues with anxiety and I read a, a book just so happened to pop up on Amazon, um, called Scr I'm sorry, called eating animals. And I'd have to look up the name of the author and see who it is. But I listened to that book and it was like the most logical approach to, to veganism and it was and it was so relatable because I was a new dad and the and the author was the whole reason that he set out to write the book was because he was a new dad and he wanted to figure out what was the best diet for him and his son and it just clicked it was like I just had my new son and I wanted to make sure that not only was I going to be healthy for him but that he was going to be healthy for him and he wouldn't have to go through this learning process at 25 years old it would For just sure. be built in, you know, that it's just natural to eat healthy. And uh, what a world. Wouldn't that be, having, you know, nice to grow up that way and not right. have to figure, figure it out like yep. all by yourself way down the road. So that's kind of where it all stemmed from. And then, of course, I saw What the Health, and that was just like sealed the deal for me. I had already gone, just gone vegan at that point. Um, but was like, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to stick to this because I don't know, you know, at the time. It, was, it still wasn't about the ethics for me. So it was like, I don't know. I don't know. And then I saw that and I was like, Shh, no way. Never again. Can't do yeah. it. So when, up until that, up until like the, uh, the documentary, it was mainly health and the ethics side of it wasn't in play yet. Ethics didn't come into play until I, like down the road. Yeah. I would say, yeah. I mean, like I've always considered myself like an animal lover, if that makes sense. But like, I've never been the the type to worry about like squashing a bug and then that just totally different now. Like I couldn't, I can't step on it. I couldn't like, I can't do it. It's the weirdest thing. Cause it's not who I was, you know, five years ago, certainly not. But like now there, if I see a bug in the house, like I'm picking you up and I'm bringing you outside, buddy. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's just, so the ethics came into play, like, I would say several months down the road after like after just th I mean really what the health did open my eyes like like with the egg industry for instance and what happens to male chicks like there's no way that I could ever eat eggs after knowing what happens to all the male chicks in the egg industry you know what I mean that's yep. just a given regardless of how ethics how much you care about the ethics of things like I just can't see how you could be on board with with that process Right. You know, how has the um, like the support been on your side? Because you were I mean, you grew up 
a fairly athletic guy and you were in the gym a lot working out, like have your family and your friends been pretty supportive or has that just been um, just the slow process of just educating and just uh, living by example? Um, I would say it's like a mix. It's not, I don't think that anybody is outright like against it or anything like that. I mean, of course, initially I got like the, the, um, you know, the usual, but you know, you got to get your protein and all, you know, like the typical right. comments that you usually get when you hear, when people hear that you're going vegan. But, um, that was another big actual motivating factor for me was that I wanted to show them all like it, no, this is like the healthiest way. And let me show you how, how in shape you can get. So that way I never have to hear about protein ever again. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Know? I mean, people can just check out your Instagram page and know that you're not protein deficient. Like, right. And yeah, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Cause I don't want to hear that question anymore. I want to talk about like, I mean, yeah, you can ask me where do I get it. That's not offensive. I mean, that's cool. That means you're interested. But outside of that, like, I want to talk about, like, how great this diet is and let's put something together. Like, I yeah. don't want to go back and forth on the, you know, on the, but is it actually good for you? Let's just, you can see it's good for you. you know? Right. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And, you know, you were talking about um, you started training for your half marathon. So how was that process? It's kind of crazy. So I just, I, I, that point I had, when I made the decision, I had never run over like three miles consecutively in my entire life. Like even playing soccer and things like that, it was a lot of sprints and stuff, not a lot of ton of long distance. So, um, one day I said, my goal was that I wanted to run five miles and I left the house and then I just did it instead of like, I said, Oh, that's my goal. Like for two weeks from now. And then instead, I just went out and did it because I was like, well, if you do that today, then think about what you can get to tomorrow. And and that then it just kind of like kept snowballing. And then that was how the idea for the half marathon came, came about. And so the week before my half marathon, I decided against the advice of like everybody on and offline that I was going to run the distance just to make sure that I could actually do it, you know, cause I didn't want to get out there and be embarrassed if, if I couldn't make it happen. And so I did, I ran, uh, 14 and a half miles around my town af after like two and a, I would say like two and a half months of training or so two months. And, um, and then, I was so beat up from doing it that I couldn't do my, my half marathon the next weekend. Oh man. Um, yeah. I was, I was so sore from doing it. It was like the middle of the summer. So it was like 90 something degrees outside when I did my run and uh, I didn't bring or plan out my, my, I was a novice. Let's just put it that way. I didn't plan out my hydration stations. I just set out like I was going to get out there and conquer this run. And I mean, <laughs> I did the run, but it, it it wasn't a good long term plan. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, you you got the distance and then some, right? But no, that's but right. that's really cool though. But did you ever um did you ever train for another one or just after that you just stuck to more like lifting and stuff? No. Well, what I do predominantly is I don't I, I like to go trail running. I don't yeah. really care to run around the around town um, unless it's like really cool outside. Um, but I'll usually go up if you look again on my Instagram and you can see some of the videos and my stories of my son Marley and I will go trail running and I have like an Osprey pack that I carry him on my back and we'll we'll go run like trails or hills or whatever up in the mountains near Auburn, California or like the other day we went all the way up to Tahoe National Park and we did like a seven mile like hike out there. So that's kind of like, that's where I took the running. Uh, so my goal for 20, what is this? 2019, because the race is coming up too soon is there's a hundred K trail run. That's, that's in the mountains where I've hiked every year since I've lived in California. Um, and so that's, that's my goal is that's to go cool. do skip the marathon, skip the half marathon and just do the, do the hundred K. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just in the mountains and with all of the, uh, obviously the beautiful scenery that helps with that kind of distance as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, when you're, 
it's for me at least it is almost a zenful experience i don't want to call it an out-of-body experience but it's it's out of mind experience at least like i'm so i'm able to just be me out there to the point that going i mean 100k is 63 something miles i believe Mm -hmm. to go 63 miles like i just feel like it would the time would go by so quickly because it's just so nice to be out there in nature yeah and in that particular place the the trail run just so happens to be to finish in my favorite trail in the world, which is Castle Peak. So it's like, it, it's almost like one of those uh, serendipitous things. It just seems right. So it's my goal. That's cool. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I talked to so many podcast guests, Chris, that say the exact same thing and that it is just um, a form of meditation and that the like inner work that they're able to do during runs like that it's just amazing. And, um, yo, I mean, I hear that over and over and over again and it's, um, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, even some of my best ideas, yep. that's, that's a big reason why I like to get out there too, is because, um, you can, a you disconnect from everything and you get out of the, out of the electronic world for a minute and you can actually let your creative side come out, you know, and, and start, let your brain without all the distractions and the bells and the whistles and the notifications and all that right. stuff, your brain can actually make some good thoughts, you, you know? And so yeah. that's where some of my best ideas come from is, is being out there on the trail. So the longer, in my opinion, the longer, the better, you know? Yeah. Do you run with music? I guess I'm guessing not. Um, it just depends on if Marley is getting restless. <laughs> I don't, I don't wear headphones for certain. Um, occasionally I will put my phone on speaker for him so we can listen to a little bit of reggae while we're going, when we usually will walk or we'll walk briskly up whatever hill that we're, or mountain that we're going and then jog back down. So maybe on the way back down while we're jogging, we usually listen to music. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. And, um, and yeah, and obviously like you're, you know, you're talking about your, your son, Marley, how has obviously switching to this type of lifestyle affected your overall parenting affected him. If I mean, for anybody that's listening and maybe has, you know, a, a toddler, like, you know, the both of us do. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, how it's really affected you as a parent and him as a toddler. So he's basically been vegan since he's been uh, on food. I mean, he, he was breastfed up until I believe 11 months is whenever we switched him over to formula and he had dairy formula for a few weeks until I learned about what was in it. And then it was like, no, we're switching him over to soy. And so it's kind of funny. That was also like, I don't want to say a motivating factor for me to learn more, but it almost was when, whenever I decided like that's what started a lot of research for me into nutrition was trying to figure out what in the world is right to give to him. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's like, well, what's done, the damage is done for me, but it's not. And and that was just ignorant thinking as well. And I don't want anyone to ever feel that way because it's not the truth either. But at the time, my thought process was the damage is done to me, but God forbid I'm going to do the same thing to my son. Let's figure out what's right for him. So that's why I went up with the soy formula for him. And then it was like, ever since then, he's been vegan. Yeah. And we, you know, and that was, so as a parent, I mean, everybody thinks I'm really strict about what I give my son or like, I don't let him live, you know, (laughs) how, you know, like, oh, let him have the cake, let him have the candy. Um, And I think that it just really made me change the definition of like what fun is for your kids. Like if you're the highlight of your children's day is having a piece of candy, then in my opinion, you're not parenting right because you should be doing more exciting things than the pinnacle being a chocolate bar, right? You know, my son, and that's that's kind of like how it affects me. Is like I want to make sure that yeah, he loves his food, but we're doing so much other stuff that when it's time to eat, it's like let's eat so we can get back to it. You know? Yeah. No, I I hundred percent love how you put that because it's so true. Yeah, it's not because it's not depriving them of 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 life. You know, it's giving them life you know like the vibrancy and the energy that they'll have from putting foods that are 
alive and have just so much nutrients, like they can play harder, they can be healthier so they can be outside more. And it's just, you know, it's, you just have to think of it like that, you know? Um, no, how you said that was amazing. And I love that. Well, and it, you know, another thing, it made me start making things that I never thought that like, I make a lot of things from scratch. You pay attention to things that you never thought you would pay attention to before. Yeah. You start doing things that you never thought, like as, especially as a guy. And I, I'm thinking probably a lot of dads can relate to this. Like in your head, you probably never put yourself in the position of doing these, these, some of these things. Like I never thought I'd be at home baking a loaf of bread because I'm worried about the additives Right. You know, are are in there or like yesterday I'm making homemade yogurt because my son loves yogurt so much. But the stuff at the store has like 20 grams of sugar in it. It's like that's just insane to me, you know, that that's in yogurt. So it's like the things that I do now, like to some parents, maybe seem like, you know, overboard. But in my opinion, like he's worth it. And it's totally worth my time to make sure that he's healthy and happy. And then he. You said something just a second ago about the energy that they have. It's like, it's crazy that parents are so upset with the behavior that their kids have, but they feed them such toxic foods every day, you know, and then wonder why they're like, you're putting poison in your kid's body. And it's literally, I mean, like in my, I don't think it's really an opinion. I think if you just look at the, the science, it's proven like you're putting poison in your kid's body. And it's like literally poisoning them. And then you wonder why they're in such a bad mood. Like they're, they're like hurting, you know, yeah. insides are, are literally hurting, maybe not in a pain sense, but you know, in a, in a disease or physical sense, you know, health sense. So no wonder they're not acting right. And their energy is off. And then ugh, you could get me on a kick about that. I, I know, I know. And it's, it's, it's so hard. Cause you know, you just, you know, we, I know you and I, we just care so much. And when you see, yeah other friends and family and even people you don't know who have kids that maybe they're struggling or they're sick a lot or, you know, you just want yeah. to help. And it's just, it's hard because everybody's on such a different place of their journey. And, you know, um, you know, just living by example is, is, is all we can really do. Right. And just love, but it's, it's hard. It really is. That's really the best way. I, I mean, I think at first, and it's just like with, I don't want to compare it to finding a new religion because I think veganism already gets enough crap for that as it is. <laughs> right. But I think just was like finding any new lifestyle really is what it boils down to. Like at first, like you're going to want to spread the word. And in particularly when it comes to veganism, it's like, of course you want to tell everybody about it because you feel like you've had this blindfold over your eyes and it's like, you want to wake everyone else up too, you know? So, I mean, at first, of course you want to tell everyone, you know, maybe what they're doing in your opinion isn't necessarily the best thing, but I've learned, like you said, you have to just do what you know is right and show people through your actions, like, and through your life, this is still okay. And this is, it works. Like this is, it's a, this is the good way to do it. Check it out. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's, that's amazing. And you know, you were, you know, talking stuff, talking about how you are a nurse and, you know, how, how have you been, how have you been able to be a positive influence on other people you work with? Like have people asked questions like, or have you gotten more people on board over at the, uh, at, over where you work? I don't think I've, I've converted anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, to veganism at my job, uh, you know, a hundred percent, but I definitely have gotten some people to be more open-minded to it. In fact, um, a lot, the people that I would say that I have more contact with as a home health nurse would be my patients. There could be sometimes where we might go, you know, weeks without running into another clinician in the field because we're scheduled to be out there by ourselves. So really the people that I would say that I've had a bigger influence on would be my patients. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, I've gone as far as with, you know, a couple of my patients to go over to their house and cook them vegan meals at night, you know, for dinner, just to give them like an introduction to things so they can see. Cause you know, you tell people vegan and I mean, I'm guilty of it too. Before I went vegan is like, you hear vegan and you like, I don't know why, but you just like clinch up. It's like, Oh, it's going to taste weird. 
Right. You know what I mean? And, and all it means is it's just vegetables or, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the most interesting concept to me now as a vegan that people think, oh, vegetables and right. meat. But it's like, you know, people hear that and they think it's going to be gross. So I, I just, if somebody shows some interest, I'm coming over to your house and I'm going to cook you a meal because I know I how to that. do it the right way. So that way you don't, you don't mess I don't, I don't mean this in a mean way, but that way you don't accidentally mess up or get the wrong thing the first time. And then you, you completely write it off. You know, let me come over. Let me show you how to do this the right way. And then if you're interested, I'll help you continue down that road. I, I do this because I really care. And I think that it's like the best for our health and for our environment and for the animals and for, you know, everything that you can think of for in California, for the water. Yep. You know, like you name it, like it's, it's nothing but positive. So like if I can do anything to get more people on board, I'm there and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to make it happen. I love that. I love that. What, what's your favorite thing to cook? I think that the biggest or the easiest thing to break people in with is tacos. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever used the light life uh, Mexican crumbles. Yes. The store, but they, yes. Yeah, so, you know, then they're really, really good. Yeah. Um, so I usually make some of those and doctor them up a little bit with like some onions and peppers and, and, uh, stuff like that and make some guacamole and just make a big, you know, a big spread with quinoa. Like I just make, basically that's usually my break in meal is make a big, huge taco bar, you know, with all kind of vegan stuff and then, um, and, and break them in that way. I love it. No, Mexican's definitely my favorite go-to. Like I can make a taco salad at literally any restaurant known to man just by <laughs> mixing all the sides. It's an, it's an art. It's an art, but no, it, that's, Absolutely. that's cool though. I, I, I love that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you have, I mean, a, pr- a pretty awesome Instagram following. Like how has that just forming that community helped you with your own journey? Because obviously it's, it's, um, encourages you to be consistent and obviously you're teaching so many other people like how has that affected you the consistency yeah it's like I love it I mean it it keeps me so accountable um and it's not that I I necessarily need that but it's nice to have I don't I want to show people like that not only is it possible but it's sustainable Right. You know, I don't want it to just be like, yeah, you can get into shape if you really bust your butt. And then, but it's, you can't keep it because, you know, your life comes back around. Like I want to show people that. And so that's where the following comes into play for me. I mean, in, in helping people is so motivating. I mean, I get questions every day about, you know, either a, I really want to go vegan and I don't know where to start. B, I try to go vegan and I couldn't do it. Or C, like my favorite, of course, is like I'm trying to get into shape and like, and I want to do it vegan. So what do I do? And that's like to get to just help people with those things, to get new new vegans on board or to keep vegans on board. That's the other big one because there's a ton of people right now um, that are going vegan that want to go vegan, but then they can't stick to it because – they run out of the stuff to cook, especially if you're not in, I'm where, I don't know, where are you located? Uh, or like right outside of Orlando, Florida. So I don't know how your selection is there, but in California, we're spoiled. With oh yeah. Food. California spoiled. Florida is actually pretty decent. It's, it's gotten a lot better, especially in the last few years. Yeah. So a lot of people that that's like the biggest problem that I come across is like, I'll tell someone, oh, yeah, go try this. And they're like, well, I went to four grocery stores and it's not there. (laughs) Yeah. You know, so like trying to help those people stick to veganism. That's actually the the ones that I like to help them. I mean, I like to help everybody, but those are the ones that I really enjoy helping because it's like it's sad that there's people out there that really want to make the change, but they just don't have the resources. Right. You know. Yeah, I'm sure you hear that a lot because you said you're from Louisiana, right? So that's, yeah. uh, I'm sure you hear that a lot. I'm actually originally from West Virginia and I hear that a lot. You know, that's, it's taken some time to get a lot of things there. It is getting better though, but it's yeah. nowhere near like where like California is or 
even Florida, it's, um, no, I feel for them too. It, it's, you know, it's going to take some time for sure. Something that I've learned, my, my family, well, my stepdad delivers ice cream and has since I was growing up and, um, and he has worked a lot with the grocers. So occasionally I've talked with the managers and stuff like that in the past. And there, if you ask your, your grocery manager, you know, if they'll stock something, a specific product, I'm not going to say that they'll definitely do it for you, Mm -hmm. but a lot of them will. So like if there's a product that you just really want, like for example, seitan is a really good, good healthy protein if you're not, you know, gluten free. So seitan, really good stuff, but hard to come by. If you went and asked the grocer for it, I'm, I'm certain that they would probably order a box of it. You know, for sure. um, you know, and the same with like, especially if they already carry some, you know, vegan products, they probably have no idea which ones that they should have on the shelf in the first place. And they're looking for feedback, you know, on what they should have there. So if you go and talk to your grocer, if you can't find something, I, I would bet now with the way that it's gaining popularity, they would, they would be totally on board with ordering stuff so yeah that's that's that's, no that's really good advice because because i know for sure that um i don't know how far north it goes but i mean we have Publix and like Publix is amazing with Mm -hmm. doing that like you you ask for something they'll get it like they're 100 percent on board i I, target target also does pretty well um if you have like a super target or something like that um but that's no that's really awesome advice though for sure because i'm sure most groceries would do that hundred percent. Well, and a lot of things too, if it, they seem like, oh man, making it from scratch will be difficult, but a, a lot of things are really easy to make from scratch, you know, and that's another thing that I've been learning and teach, trying to teach and want to teach more is like a lot, a lot of this stuff is not that inaccessible because surprise, you don't have to spend, you know, $8 at the store for it. You can just make it for like a couple bucks right. at home. Like I made I made enough seitan last night to last me a couple of weeks. And it was, I did the math. It's like $4. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to make a whole batch. And it's like hundreds, it's like 300 something grams of protein in this whole batch of, you know, food here that I've just made. So that's true. And it's something that's like, yeah. And if, obviously if you're on the go, um, something like Chipotle is really awesome. Cause you can make yeah. it big, but I mean, but at the same time, all of those ingredients you could make at your house for so cheap. Um, right. You know, for the cost that you would buy a bowl, you that could cover you like the whole week. So it's, it's thinking about things like that too. Obviously if you're out, that's amazing. Um, but it's, um, there's a lot of things that can be made at home just by planning ahead a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do, I work with clients online and do like meal planning and training plans and all that stuff. And, um, that's actually the biggest thing that I think people actually need help with. They don't, I mean, yeah, they need your recipes and stuff like that too, sometimes, but a lot of them already have like a good knowledge of like what's good proteins and what's, you know, I shouldn't be eating this much fat. They've got that, but they just don't know how to put it like all together and how to plan ahead. So that way, whenever it comes time to eat, it's already ready or easily accessible you know right. they wait until they wait until they're hungry and then they try and you know then it's they, dangerous yeah yeah and then we all falter i mean i have if i go all day without eating the first thing i want to come home do is eat a big spoonful of peanut butter you know so i mean i think we all have you know our weaknesses in that area yeah no for sure and you're talking about your training so um, obviously that's something that you're currently working on, you know, is there other stuff that you're working on in the future that you just want to put out there and, and share with everybody? I mean, I, I'm planning on a YouTube channel really cool. soon. I've been, I've been talking about it for probably a month or so now and just have different hangups here and there. Um, but mostly just commitment issues, I would say. I would say. Just do it. I'm, I'm going to give you a hard time now until you make it. So no, you definitely I, I do it. That. I need that. I need the pressure. Um, <laughs> it's just I've recorded. I've actually recorded like probably four different introduction videos and just been really dissatisfied with 
with the way that they came about. So um, I when I'm going back to down home to Louisiana and then making a little vacation over to Pensacola for the, for like the weekend after the 4th of July. And while I'm there, I'm going to record my video for sure. And now I'm cool. putting it out there. So I can't, I, I don't know if this is going to be on before or after that happens, but I'm putting it out in the, in the, on the air. So it's, it's for sure going to happen. I'm going to record my video there and then we'll get it on the, awesome. on the YouTube. Yep. And if you guys are listening, shoot Chris a message. If this has come out about the same time as his recording and let him know that you've checked out his YouTube channel because uh, I know it's going to be great. So yeah, cool. please, please do. I love yeah. feedback. Awesome. And, and um, yeah, so your uh, YouTube channels in the works, but what is the best way for people to follow you on social media? That way they can keep up with everything that you're doing and, and putting out there. Yeah. I mean, my main thing is Instagram right now. I would say if you want to check me out, if you want to get in touch with me, my Instagram is more underscore underscore Chris. It's M O O R E underscore underscore C H R I S. And just, yeah, shoot me a message or comment. Um, I have like a lot of meals and recipes on there. Um, I'm willing to share some of my workout stuff. Um, you know, I'm not going to write up full workout plans or anything <laughs> like that, but I will gladly share, you know, some of my secrets, you know, and tips on how to go vegan, stay vegan and really want to just chat with whomever, but I make sure to answer everybody. And that's like no exaggeration. If you send me a message, even if it takes me a day or so, I will get back to you. So please ask questions. I want to, I want to chat. I like talking with different people. Awesome. Yeah. Go get, definitely go give him a follow guys. And I'll put that in the show notes. That way people can just go click and give you an ad. But, um, but Chris, just closing question that I ask every guest, but if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's something that's been like your biggest takeaway through your wellness journey. But if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would say just focus on your journey. That's really what I would say. I mean, most people are, you know, stuck in a loop of comparing themselves to others and their journey, whether it be fitness, veganism, health, status, you know, whatever. But if you start focusing on your own journey, whatever that is, you know, a lot of a lot of different doors and opportunities can open up it can really help you stick to things. So. Absolutely. No, that's perfect, Chris. And just, Hey, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to get to share your story with everybody and just excited to see the amazing work you continue to do. So just thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited that you asked me to be here and I get to, you know, share my story a little bit with some people. So I, I really, really appreciate you, you having me on. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Chris. He's doing so much positive work, so be sure to give him a follow on social media to keep up with everything that he's been working on. You can find his social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes, but you can also find them on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y-J-O-H-N-S-O-N.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So all of Chris's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Chris, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. Also, be sure to check out patreon.com slash Dr. Casey Johnson to learn more about how you can support the Unlock Wellness podcast. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you loved it. I hope it inspires you. And most importantly, I hope you take action.